so I want to talk about the 69. Because in the Masonic arch, okay, it's sideways. And it's a depiction of basically five quadrants. You know, you have one, two, three, four, five quadrants. And one empty space in a two-dimensional plane. You know, it's like a five one-dimensional lines and one zero-dimensional singularity, which is a 50. And if you upside down, backwards, and flip 50, okay, you get a 5 again, or an S, okay? And if it's 0 is equal to 1, it all goes back to this. So, it's important, 50 is important, because we live in a reality of hex, okay? So we have a 6, which is a circle and a line, we have a 9, which is a circle and a line, and we have a Z, which is a circle, and the line's created because the 1 is a 0, okay? Now, 0 to 16, that's the first 16, so your P. 17 to 33, okay, that's your Q to your capital G. And then 34 to 50, 50 is a Roman numeral for L. So I look at this as creation of the third dimension. You gotta mind your P's and Q's, okay? And we're talking about girth height and length you know, depth you know girth but anyway I think that this is important because it creates our stairway to heaven which is important in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth so if everything's backwards that would be the heaven and that would be the earth from God's point of view and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Gotcha, so it is a closed system. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There you go, it's like, you know, a little sperm in an egg or something. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. All right, and there was light. So something like it, but different, was created. And it is connected to heaven and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness makes perfect sense okay God divided the light from the darkness made a V guys or a lowercase r and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day so God divided the light from the darkness, and the evening, you know, the high goes, the sun goes to its highest point, then starts to go down. And the morning, you know, then the sun starts to come up again, were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Alright, so like... These are the waters, okay? It's like a two-dimensional plane of all the waters. Now we're going to divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So all that means is that a new light was created, okay? Neptune for liquids. Pluto, you know, P for Pluto. And then, which was a, a two-by-one. Now liquids are created, okay? So we're literally... Gonna divide the waters, which are liquids and gases in blue, from the solids, Pluto. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Alright, so your observer, God, is still here. Okay, created the firmament to divide the waters from the waters. Okay, waters from the waters. Okay, so the firmament was above. Okay, as above, so below. Anyway, just means that <laughs> another day passed. Okay, and we're going to go on. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let dry land appear, and it was so. Okay, this is interesting, because as the observer, okay, it just said that, let dry land appear, you know, under. So it's like, it's creating a cell where the observer is here, and 
what I think it's going to do is it's going to kind of eventually create until we're in the middle of celestial, you know, sky, which is the light for all the <laughs> you know, reality. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. So I would say that these two are equivalent from a certain point of view. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yield. Alright, so from, you know, the observer's plane, you know, grass... Herb yielding, you know, seed and fruit tree. Plants, making a big capital Q. Tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Yeah, I have to add the plus one because it's yielding fruit upon itself, okay? Because that means we have our one here, our two here, three, four, five. And five is important because I always said that the plant started at five, and here's why. There is actually why the plants start at five. You got a little lowercase q, you got a capital Q, you got a capital P. You have an S. Lots of stuff going on here, guy. So, since we have plants now, maybe I should, you know, just like... Plants, because... Plants are life, and life is good. Alright, this column here will be for all the different types of ones you can have. Because on the first row, you have an outreach of one from heaven. Okay? On the next row, you have an outreach of one link, two links from heaven. On the next link, you're going to have a bigger circle going all the way down to here for three links. Four links. Five links. All the Fibonacci column means is that when the cell drops down, it's going to drop down like this. Meaning that the next number will be the sum of the other two. Because that's actually what happens in Fibonacci. Okay. So I just emphasized on the corners here because this tail is coming out. Because now we have the hypercube, okay? We have, you know, it's a cube or square and a square and a square. It's a hypercube. It's your 3D. That's your fur. That's these are your ones. This is just a one is a zero and balance. The balance between the zero and the one. Okay. This is your first dimension, second dimension, the creation of your third dimension. It's your depth. Okay. All right. So again, I know that above the line of balance, we're gonna have our Roman numeral for five. Okay. But I'm gonna show you how we derive that as well. Now, if we're solving for this cell, okay, we have to look above it, and it's connected this way, okay? Then we have a node, and then it's going to go downwards until the line of balance, and that's what this value is going to be. So it's going to be equal to a 1 by 4, but in a 1 by 3 with a bend, okay? So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, because we're only dealing with zeros and 1s where they are equivalent. Now, let's solve for this guy, okay? Look, he's in a 1 by 4, but his... It'll end here, okay? But this guy is connected to this guy, which is connected to this guy, which goes to here to the line of balance. So what do we have? We have a 5, we have a 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And just for good measure with your V, you're going to have, a, again, a 1 by 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 and a 1 is a 5 because the zeros counts as zeros because the 4 is present. Now look, every single cell is individualized. It kind of looks like a candy cane barber pole. And the evening and the morning were the third day. So pictorially, this is what's going on, okay? You've created the third dimension, an XYZ plane, okay? And it's all contained within a two-dimensional plane, let's say A by B, okay? In a 5D reality, okay? Solids, liquids, and gases are encased. Now we're going to get on to some fancy stuff. And doesn't that look kind of like, you know, there's your Sports Illustrated? You know? Anyways. I see English here. I see E. You know? I got my N. I got my, my, my lowercase G. My L. 
<laughs> my I, S, my H, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. Moving on, when this cell goes down to solve for the 28, look what it is. It's a giant fly spec. It's the first time we have, like, you know, this is a fly spec too, okay? It's a one and a one, I guess, but whatever. This, this one's a little bit more important because, look, we have this and this both using a 13. That's 13 plus 13 is 26, and at the end, in the end, you have a one and a zero. 26, 27, 28. It's 28, okay? Not only that, but if you bring down the cell and drop it to here, okay? What it means is that you're going to have a 4 plus a 5, which is a 9. 9 plus 13 is 22. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. That number is 28. And there is the cellular depiction of it. Interesting enough, a 28 plus a 13 is a 41, plus a 9 is your 50. So, we're going to stop here and go on to day 4. All right, and so just for good measure, to get the last cell of four here, to get my V isolated, so that everything above here has now been isolated, uh, the next cell down here is equal to 91, okay? It's equal to 91 because that's the sum of 50, 28, and 13, okay? It doesn't include the V because we finally circled the V because this all is a V. As you can see, it's a dot, a dot, a dot with a line of 28 and a line of 4. Add them together, 32 magnets in your X, Y, Z planes of your free energy device to make 96 magnets in heaven plus the 14 magnets, okay? Give your 110, but then you have to also account for your other two. Uh, 32 times 2 for 64 which is your 174 magnets total needed in heaven. Now we need to make the V going the other way. So to solve for this guy down here, it's gonna be the cell above it because we already meant balance, so all this crap doesn't matter. It's just gonna be the 91 plus this stuff to complete the V. So 91 plus 13, okay? is 104, 106, 109, 110. There we go, just to be complete. Okay, I'll end this video with this one because, you know, 1 of 7 of 13 of 110 showed its ugly face. And it kind of looks like we have a 9-1-1 going on. 9-11, guys, this shit's getting real. <laughs>